and you're welcome back to Biscuit Daily. As promised, our guest is in the studio. He is Abe Abimbola. Welcome to Biscuit Daily. Thank you for having me on this program. Okay, <laughs> so I really didn't say anything about you or what you do because I want to give you the opportunity to do that yourself. So, okay. Abe, the table is yours. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Okay, guys, uh, let me do a short introduction because I don't want to take so much of your time. My name is Abe Abimbola, just like she said, uh, famously known as Kwaki Don. And what do I do for a living? I'm a professional actor, director, stuntman, and the first Nigerian who has gone out of the country. And I think I've done over 50 movies outside Nigeria. Where and where have you shot in? Uh, I have worked with uh, Indian film industry, Malaysian film industry, Chinese people. I've done a couple of movies outside Nigeria. I think I'll get back to that later on because okay. the journey wasn't that easy like that. Okay. You know, on this program since it's the entire episode we have okay. enough time but that's what you say before yeah. you know the time is off so <laughs> what we'll do we we'll, we'll go to the most important most thing important. so we don't leave anything out now abe abimbola what is abe that's abe abiodo abi right? yeah you uh -huh. got it right okay so ab how do people pronounce your name when you're not here Actually, they say Abby. They call me Abby. I'm like, okay, it's not Abby because over there they have something they call they, they, their their name starts from A B B Y. Okay. So they always think, okay, Abby. your name is Abby. Like Abby girl. Abby. Like Abby girl. Oh, so right. I'm like, okay, my name is not Abby. It's you can call Abby. me Abby. Yeah, just like Bay, something okay. like that. Awesome. Now, when you what stuck out for me is okay to be an actor. It's okay to be a movie maker. But what stuck out for me was the stunt man. You know, when you're talking about stunts, I feel like, oh my god, this person won't kill himself. And <laughs> 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 sure when you're doing like Tom Cruise crazy kind of stunts. I'm so, sure that's what I do. I know, I know. So I'm <laughs> like, you know, when we're chatting, I was like, how come you've stayed alive? You don't have any broken bones and anything like that. So tell us about your stunts and what's be, what it means to be a stunt person like you are. Okay, um, like I said before, I've been in the movie industry for almost 20 years now and you know, being an, being an Hollywood movie actor wasn't that easy for me, you know, uh, I have done a couple of movies in Nigeria before and in 2013 I said to myself, Abe, you keep on doing all these movies and yet your bank account is still the same mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I think I need to see out of the box. So I decided in 2013, I said, okay. I need to travel out of the country, mm -hmm. so I see how it is going over there, mm -hmm. outside Nigeria. So, I decided to travel to India. So, but when I got to Malaysia, mm -hmm. I couldn't proceed because, right. like, my visa cannot permit me to go to India. So, it's more or less like when I got to Malaysia, I get stuck. stuck. I'm like, okay, I think it is what it is. I just have to go with the flow here. So, mm -hmm. trying to mingle with them, it's not that easy mm -hmm. because first thing you need to consider you don't speak their language. Another thing is. Even if you want to be an actor over there, they won't accept you like that. You know why? Because here in Nollywood, fine, Nollywood movie industry is still the second largest movie industry in the world in terms of quantity because we produce nothing less than 2,599 movies yearly. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that is quantity. But then, Nollywood movie industry is still out there everywhere. So, you know, being a Nollywood movie actor and I have done a lot of movies, so that, that was the, the courage for me. Like, I went for different auditions. You know, mm -hmm. when I got to my auditions, they were like, Oh, Mr. Abbey, we love your expression. The way you deliver your lines, mm -hmm. very okay. Mm -hmm. But then, can you, do you have any mixed martial art background? Okay, like you should fight Kung Fu. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, me. Right. Me in Nollywood, we don't do all this. We, we only jack up, we only talk, we yeah. only break bottle and do. <laughs> like Agbero, yeah? yeah, thank you very much. Things like that. <laughs> we keep it real on this. So, show. Yeah. you know, I said to myself, I said, sorry, I cannot do this. You know what they told me? They said, okay, sorry, Mr. Abe, you can't be an actor in Malaysia or because you can act, you can be an extra. Mm, I know those extras, they don't give them any speaking roles. You That's don't have past. it. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in the crowd. Even if you walk up as people can still pick your face. Some will be in the crowd that you cannot even see their faces. So and I said to myself, this is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. So I stopped going for different auditions. In Malaysia. And I, in Malaysia. So, and I said, okay, what can I do to blend with these people? Number one thing is I cannot speak their, their language. They can't even communicate with me. Mm -hmm. So, and I said to myself, lucky I had a friend back then. His name uh, is Keshan. He's late now. May he so rest in perfect peace. Yes, okay. So, I met this guy and this guy said, Abi, you've been my friend for a few months now and I know you're a very good guy. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just take some of your time, go and learn mixed martial arts? Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, at this age, where would I start from? But you know, for the fact that I love what I do. What, how long? How long ago was this? 
I'm talking about eight years ago, 2013, 2013, 14. How, can I ask you how old you are? I am 40 years old. Really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I keep busy. I am. I keep busy no, oh, I am old. Uh, I am an old man, anyways. <laughs> well, Mario, I'll start the game again. I am married, though. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Okay, so great. Um, you know why I asked? Because you okay. were like, at what age do I start? That yeah. means you were like 32. Why? Why I say that is there are people who are watching who. Yeah. Perhaps they're like 50 years old and they're yeah. like, I'm too old to do this. You yeah. know, that's why I ask so that, you know, listen, it's never too old. You're never too You old are never before. too old. It's never too late. Trust you me. Know? So please. Because even, even then, that was the first thing I considered. Like, Abby, I, I, I was almost 40 there and I'm like, where would I start from? Mm -hmm. Jumping up and down, doing all these kind of stunts that I've never done for almost 16 years of my movie mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a while and I decided, I said, Abe, you can do it. You're never too old for this. Mm -hmm. So this friend of mine said, Abe, go and learn mixed martial art. I devoted my time. I learned few, uh, mixed martial art. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the back of my head, I was like, Abe, you have a very nice body. Within myself, I knew I, I'm, I'm, too, I'm too fine. I'm too fine. Yeah, Abe, calm down. <laughs> okay, calm down. <laughs> so I said Sorry. to myself, people be like, you can do this. Why, why, why you need mixed martial art? So, and I mm -hmm. said to myself, I bet you need to do beyond mixed martial art. Yeah. So from there, I, I decided to go for silat. Silat is a, a, is a cultural fight. It's a kind of traditional fight in Malaysia. In Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So you know, Chinese they have this kung fu. Brazilian they, they have this uh, uh, capoeira. So in Malaysia, okay. uh, this uh, silat is their major kind of fight. And I said to myself, if I can do this kind of fight here in Malaysia, I think it will create more awareness. You know, because I want people to know me. I want people to know the hidden talent in me. So mm -hmm. I went for this silat. My sila was supposed to take me about um, six months, mm -hmm. but you know, because of the bond between me and my sifu, I spent sifu over is like a, a sifu is like a teacher, yeah. So I spent over a year, and thank God, while I was doing all these things, I was using the opportunity to learn my language, to Malaysia. learn their language, yeah, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Malaysia. I was using the same opportunity to learn a lot of things about their culture. Okay. Okay. So you know, after after I, I put all these things together, and I said to myself, I bet it's time for me to do something. So after that, I produced this movie titled Black and uh, Warm Blood. So by the time I produce one blood, I cut the trailer, then I throw it out there, and everybody like, oh, who is this Nigerian guy doing silat? Okay, one blood is it in Malaysian production? It's a mixed production. Nigeria shot in Malaysia and shot in Nigeria. Who's who? who who's you? It's yeah, your movie. Yeah, I produced, I directed it. Produced what? under my company. Okay, because you're talking about even auditioning to get a role. Yeah. So how did you transition from that to listen? I don't just want to be paid; I want to pay others and hire others as well. I think it, it, it's everywhere because nobody believed in you until you prove to people that this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I've been to different auditions just like I told you before and they're like, sorry Mr. Abe, you cannot do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to continue the same thing like after I am done with one year of hard work of my trainings and mm -hmm. things like that, I still want to be going for uh, auditions and I, or I will stay back. At, I'm like, okay, Abe, I think you can do this and I, I told you I got a friend who is, is Keshian. Mm -hmm. So we produced this movie together and after we caught the trailer, boom. The trailer went viral in Malaysia. Like, who is this black guy doing silat? That has, you know, that, that shot me. Edge. Thank you very much. Mm. So from there, people started calling me like, hey, hello, Mr. Crack, please, can you choreograph a movie or can you act as a villain in a movie? So from there, I started getting my attention. Why do I think you make the perfect villain? <laughs> Look at your hair and your beard. I, I, I actually, <laughs> this is not my real face. So. <laughs> uh, right. It was only when I got back to Nigeria now that I started like, okay, I think this is the trending stuff. And I'm like, okay. You guys do not think I am an old school, so I had to blend with you. <laughs> it's not the trip, but it looks good. So thank you so go much. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, I think I I talk a lot. <laughs> no, so, but you have to yeah. for what you do. Okay. You know, so it works. Now talking about you know transitioning from being an actor to actually directing, what was that like for you to do this movie, The One Blood? What was the casting process? How did you hire people? Because, like you said, you were in Malaysia, not yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. So, how did you hire people? What was the contact? Was it is it more expensive to shoot there than here? You know, like <laughs> oh, you're like, am I even comparing? Like, uh, are you are you even going there? You are not even supposed to be asking. Of <laughs> I'm that. not supposed to ask that. Okay, you know, like okay. So, what? Just explain it. No, it to wasn't us. easy like that. But mm -hmm. you know, because I have the uh, I had this a uh, friend called Keshian. 
So Kesha, Kesha is uh, he was a producer, mm -hmm. director, uh, you know, with his contacts, he was able to help me to put a lot of things together. together. Did the casting. The Kesha is Malaysian, right? He's a Malaysian, so local sorry. India Malaysian. You know, sometimes they say it's our people, we get small beef, sha, small barbele, uh, small. Uh, you know that kind no of be thing? small. The barbele was actually big because, sorry to say, most of my people in supporting me over there. No the sup they don't the support, support wedding coming from my people from my own skin people. that's why i asked you that is he malaysian no you know like the cajun because it sounded like what i know you you, you both people generally can be generous yeah you know that's why i asked sorry i know there are India. very wonderful nigerians i know that but yeah. sometimes uh, when you're doing the same thing as they are doing they are yeah. just giving you beef and bad a lot, a lot a lot of things like that but trust me you know because like uh like what i said before i i i don't I don't pay attention to people who support who don't support me. Mm -hmm. I focus more on those that are supporting me because if I paid attention to those people that are not supporting me, yeah, I am being yeah. distracted. Mm -hmm. So I, there's no point for me distracting myself from when I should stay focused and keep my head up. Right. So I knew my people are not supporting me. Mm -hmm. So I don't want that to like maybe I'm not going to do it again. Mm. So I keep my head up, keep doing the best that I can. Rather you, know. you did it and you proved them wrong. And I proved them wrong. Thank you oh, very much. Sorry. But now everyone, I think everyone is proud of me. Eh, <laughs> that's it. Now I don't do, I don't do, I don't tell you. I tell you, make you know yeah. that. Yes, I say, oh my bikini, better bikini. Better it's, bikini. Our, it's, our, it's our own. It's our own, yeah. So, <laughs> so I thank God for that. that. You I know, that. on the program, we tend to be real because this is Africa. So we are proud of our heritage. So thank we mix so our lingua in and keep it real on the program it can be whiter than the whites really. you can be you can you be can. okay so tell us about one blood what is one blood before we get to the newest uh, movie movie yeah one blood was actually talking about uh racism because you know okay. i put everything i've been through over there into a movie because when i got there the, there's this racism that was really high then not not that much again now mm -hmm. uh because i think nigeria's black people are everywhere and you know our skits, our songs, they are jamming it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, even when I stepped into a lift, you will see some of them covering their nose, like you busu. Busu is like you're smelling. You're smelling so it's that, that, that kind of uh, attitude. Really? A lot. Like, it, it, like just the way you, you make your face now, that's what they would do. Like, once you step into a lift uh, as a black man, you see them covering their in nose. In Malaysia. Like, I'm telling you, especially the Indian, uh, the, sorry, 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 especially the Chinese people. But now it's not like that again. When you step into the lift now, the first thing they do is hello. They shake their head. So, but then it is what it is. We're still alive, still breathing, and you know I so put this together. You, uh, okay, well, you know I wanted to ask how did you not get into a lot of fights? But I'm like I wanted to ask that's the civilized hello. country. <laughs> if you fight, police will collect you. Yeah, but actually, yeah, uh, it happened a few times. Oh, you got But in. yeah, because sometimes when they bring it to you, you can't just take it because we are humans. Yeah. So we tend to get angry, things like that. But then not in that violent way. Okay. okay. All right. That's fine. Now. I like the fact that you had one plan to go to a different country yeah. and then you got stuck. Sort of, you thought it was this being stuck, you didn't know it was a redirection. A redirection, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a spiritual being, I'm, yeah, you, you get I'm, that. I'm a Jesus person, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, like, you know, it's a redirection, so you got redirected, and like, you know, how um, God said, Stay here, Stay I will here. bless you here. Yeah. And now, you, you, you were quick to catch it, some other person would have been there crying and saying i'm going to wait until my papers open up to india to india i'm not going to do anything in malaysia until i get to, until india. I get to india but how were you able to quickly think and quickly adjust and quickly start doing something in malaysia because i i knew it started from paying your bills because mm -hmm. the, when you when i got over there the first thing that came to my mind is where i was staying you have to pay for this you have to pay for that you have to pay for a whole lot of things and it's and not as if mind and considering men so they won't tell you they won't tell you you have to tell yourself like this is what you need to do and you know talking about my document i was using a student visa then mm -hmm. i was using a student visa so the student visa doesn't permit me to even go around I'm so watching. and i'm like i have wasted almost a year mm -hmm. in my head i was like okay abe a year another year that means i'm not going to be doing anything so in my head i'm like okay start searching for nearby auditions that's why i started going for this mm -hmm. manager and trust me even the india that I was crying over that I, I wanted to go to they bring a lot of indian films to me mm -hmm. even i cannot go there but they started bringing the movies to me and i have had a lot of movies that i had to go to india to so many shoot. times 
to go and shake. Can you imagine? So, so your it, place was actually Malaysia. Malaysia. <laughs> so go and work in India. In, in you India. Be <laughs> All, right, like. <laughs> All right, we have to go on a quick break. And when we come back, Piskun Devi continues with Abi. We'll be right back. Enjoy. <laughs> These people are dangerous people. You are about to shake the table and they won't like it. It won't fly. I'm so sorry, we did not see you. Please, would you let us take it to the hospital? Very soon, we see the results. Nigerians are living like this without electricity. We say no more darkness. Nigeria is giving people light, yet we do not have light. No to blackout. They should supply us power. Nigeria has been blessed with huge reserves of natural resources. Who sent you to kill my mother? You want me to tell you? Anyone. When two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. Who is this thing? Kill him. Okay. Daily, we're still talking all just in with Abi Abi Odin, the stuntman. I like to think of you as a stuntman, yeah. even <laughs> you resemble stuntman, said. And Thank then you. you know, the movie producer and director. Now, let's talk about your most recent work okay. that uh, Blackout, Blackout, right? Exactly, what is Blackout, your movie? Actually, Blackout uh, was inspired by, by the situation Nigerians are facing. Because I can't imagine a country with over 200 million people oh, wow. to say, and we are depending on four to 5,000 megawatts of electricity. I mean, it breaks my heart every time I think about this, and I don't even want to figure it out. <laughs> so uh, when I came back to Nigeria in 2018, I said to myself, Abe, I was supposed to be working on another project mm -hmm. titled Nelayan. So, but in my hotel room, and I'm like, the noise everywhere, the, 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 the generator pollution, then I'm like, okay, Abe, I think... You know somebody that just came back from Obodoyi, but when they are saying noise pollution, us, we just know that light have come. When generator is on, uh, oh, that, <laughs> he that, said noise pollution, please. That really, really got me, <laughs> I don't want to say angry, but then uh, it redirected everything mm. I wanted to do. Then I'm like, okay, I think to, I, I need to start working on this mm. project. So I wrote the story and I started shooting the movie Blackout. So until date, I have never regretted working on this project. Actually, it took me a whole lot of time because uh, this is three years we've been working on this oh, project. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, so how do you... Um, I know you were inspired by real events, but yeah, how event. do you narrate the stories without seeming, without seeming like you're attacking the government? Because, exactly. You know, because you know, it's like everyone is so sensitive these Very days. Sensitive. If you say, 
protest. They don't say and say you be criminal. Maybe we'll go exactly. pick you. Exactly. You know, so you have to be very cautious in what you're doing. Exactly. Yes, still pass your message and make it so real so that somebody will not say, I beg you. I beg you, this is not real. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. Because we are watching it. We are the ones going through the exactly, experience. Exactly. So we should be able to say, ah, this one is real. It's real. You know, but we still don't want to offend our elders. Offend our elders. Who are yes. the government yes. people. We don't have uh-huh. to be disrespectful to them. Yes. So how do you balance the act? Okay, actually, in the story, I wouldn't want to tell so much about this movie because this movie, you're going to see it on your big screens on the 29th of this month. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you won't regret seeing this movie. But, you know, in the story, I was actually portraying this uh, situation that we Nigerians are facing. And how do we go about it that you won't offend the government, just like you said, because who am I to even say what the government is doing Mm -hmm. is good or bad? bad, So I I, I try to be very, very polite about passing my message Mm -hmm. across. Mm -hmm. Because in the in the movie I was uh I featured this woman, uh Ayomogaji. So she happens to be my mom in the movie. Like I said, I'm not gonna explain the movie. But then she was the one protesting the this peaceful protest in the movie. And after she I, w- I didn't even know about the protest. I just Yeah, you, you were just saying, yeah. But in the movie we had <laughs> right. uh one or two pro yeah. Okay. So she was doing that and actually, you know, that's a something movie. happened. Yeah. I'm not saying something <laughs> happened that you need to watch out for. Right. And at the end of the day, I mean, even talking about this uh, light of a thing in the movie is less than 15 minutes. So at the end of the day, my character come into the story like, okay, what is wrong? What? Why is this thing? And you won't smell anything like generator or political story again. Mm. It's just 15 minutes. But if you watch this 15 minutes of this movie, you already know what the movie is all about. Mm-hmm. It's just like an eye opener for people to like, okay, oh, this is the problem. How do we go about it? How do we tell our elders like, please, we we needed to adjust on this point for us. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure people are gonna love it. Trust me. Okay. So what do you think can really help Nigeria as a as a young person? Like you know, sometimes they go, young people they just want to party and have fun. Say you had the opportunity to be the governor for a day or perhaps a month. What would you perhaps do? differently or perhaps better you see um i think i was asked this question before and for me for the fact that i love my country and i want a better nigeria so this is what i'm thinking if i was given the opportunity to become a day because i i think i've watched a movie they call a day minister Mm -hmm. or a day governor or a day president Mm -hmm. if i was given the opportunity to become a day president i don't want to be anyways but if i was given the opportunity i think i work more on the lights on the electricity because I feel for an industry to grow or for a country to grow, we need adequate of power supply. Mm-hmm. It won't work with erratic power supply in Nigeria. It won't work. So if we had adequate of power supply, I'm sure uh, it will help it a lot of things, economic, a lot of things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it is what it is. For me, I would just focus more on that. Okay. So coming back to how how do you still live in Malaysia now fully or do you shuttle between here and Malaysia? Between both because Malaysia is my second home. Okay, oh Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria oh, is Nigeria. my first home. So you are still eating the Malane Ah, that's that was the first place I went. <laughs> the minute I came back to Nigeria. <laughs> awesome. Now, okay. So the question now is, um, when you came home to Nigeria, have you? the blackout you shot it here in nigeria yeah what was the reception when you got back like did they you know when you when you were in malaysia shooting the first movie you said uh, that's one blood yeah that was one blood yeah. yeah you mentioned your people people of our race did not support you not now support. coming home here to shoot blackout what was the reception like did they like welcome you or did they uh, did they respect you more because it's your movie it's your project yeah. maybe that's why or did they give you a hard time like who is this person which kind of money where you get money where you just call call it shoot that bag yeah. back you know this kind of yeah small small side beef sha. i understand that but the thing is you know the, the first time was proving to people what i can do mm-hmm. because from the one blood they have already seen it like oh i think this guy is not stopping so ever since then, I've been getting this small, small support from them. Like, okay, ah, it's our brother. We need to support him. Mm-hmm. Even though they don't acknowledge you publicly. Mm-hmm. But privately, they, they, they will talk about you. Like, ah, man, that guy is doing good. He's featuring in a lot of movies in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. And let me add this to my cup anyways. I am the first black man to be a wrestler over there under my PW. I do wrestling as well. So so nobody should look for your wahala. Say I'm already scratching. Don't, don't I, scratch I it. <laughs> <laughs> because I got this 
that you have used for me before you catch me. But... No, but you are a gentleman. You won't beat a lady. Very, very. I have never done that before in my life. No, but I'm just saying they should not say ah this guy. No, before he's trying. No, don't say that <laughs> because they will beat. It will be like I shake won't, shake. I won't, I won't. No, I mean for a guy now. Nobody should look for your trouble. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> you, you wrestle. You I do, wrestle. Like, I do stunt mastery. I, I do a lot of things like that. But then, oh if God. you are an MMA uh, mixed martial art, you don't fight. That's one thing you need to get. MMA is that, is that, is that like, mixed is that martial not, art. It's kind of like cage fighting. That's octagon fighting. Okay, break down the octagon. I yeah, octagon. That those people. Yeah, cage is still the same. We call it octagon. That hey, when but it's you, cage now. You fight. That is Nigerian word. Like when you say cage, okay, like oct- are you oct- referring me to a lion or tiger? <laughs> no, but that is even more dangerous than more WWE. Deadly. Yeah, yeah. I WWE. Know. I don't want to reveal the secret, but then we go through a lot of pain because it's not. It's not as easy as people like. Oh, wrestling is fake. Until you get in the ring with me and I hit your body on the ground few times, then you will know it's not fake. The wrestling, right? That's we choreograph. WWE, yeah. I'm talking about wrestling. We choreograph the fight. Sometimes when I'm fighting with somebody that is far away from me that we cannot meet before the fighting day, only the thing, the only thing we will have at the back of our mind is all our all our rehearsal, all our training. Like, okay, when you move your hand like this, I know you're definitely going with me. When I move my hand to the left, but you know you're going but, to the right. But mistakes can happen, and you can really we actually do. punch somebody yes. and knock them out. You won't be knocked out because whatever I'm bringing to you is more or less like I'm giving you twenty percent of my shot. Right. Hiding away from the camera. Right. It's like when I want to punch you, I'm not going to punch you directly. But I'm, when I'm facing the camera, like this, going to be like, stop shot. All right. Mm-hmm. So even when I mistakenly hit you, you're not feeling it that much, unless if you are not a professional um, fighter. Um, please, so you know that thing has not got so really to Nollywood, though. There are some people like Madame Patience Ozoku. I will be bringing it. That uh, <laughs> you will say, let's do stunt. Let, just pretend to slap somebody, and you see double. Do you know what I mean? I understand. There are some people that they will really give you. I, I found that very abusive. On set, okay, sorry, I, I want to say something. No, there was, there was, there was a shot I saw. <laughs> they were shooting a movie somewhere in Nigeria, slap. right? And then <laughs> there was a scene that the guy, the man, was supposed to beat another man. Like he saw him in the, he was chasing him through a village path and just really flog him. I think he was chasing his wife or his girlfriend or something. And the man was, it got to a point that the guy. The man they were beating forgot he was in the movie. He collected the cane. I'm and like, what the hell? Why are you doing this? He was, he, the pain was too much. He started flogging the person back. So that's why we, over there, we don't do that. Mm-hmm. We do all these stuff that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. But then, there are so many ways we go about it. Number one thing, that's why I said Hollywood movie, we still need to learn a lot. Number one thing is this. When we shoot a movie over there, we don't inconvenience our artists, our actors. In the sense that if I had to slap you, I'm not going to slap you real. That is why our cameraman over there, I'm not trying to disrespect or dis, uh, to discredit Sorry, our yeah. cameraman. Mm-hmm. When we shoot over there, they are not lazy. It's not about static shot. So when I, if the scene, scene require me to slap you like this, cameraman, you should know that when I want to slap, you should move to the other side. Edges or round. When edges. you move to the other side, so it's a chilling shot. We call it chilling shot. Mm-hmm. So it's just going to be like, if I'm slap, if I was slapping you from this side, your camera must be here. So you turn your face to the camera. Effect. If I were, if I needed to flog you, we have a lot of prop cane. That even when if I was flogging you, you won't feel anything. And when we get to the studio, because that's why we do post production. Mm. So when we get to the studio, Editing. we put sound effect. Mm. That is where ADR coming. That is where Foley coming. That's where all these things comes in. You see why I want to talk to you as a stunt person because you're really breaking down the stunt. That's for what us. I'm doing right now. Because a lot of times when I watch my husband act as well in yeah. yeah. So when I'm watching movies and I'm like, why did you choose that? And then I'm, I'm, I'm crying <laughs> for real. He's like... The rest I show you will cry again, blackout. Because <laughs> we, we, we have some scenes that will make you go extra. Like He's like, can you stop? Like, this is none of this is real. Stop. Why yeah, are you crying? No, like, no. he doesn't get it. Like, stop. It I'm like, me, me. Let you me, don't let understand. Me just cry it out. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Nollywood movie, we're doing good, but we right. still need to learn more. Because mm. I faced a lot of challenges while shooting Blackout, the movie. Okay, because we really want you to tell us some of the challenges. Yes. Because a lot of time, people just want to hear the glory story. Yeah. Tell us some of the challenges. Even while I was shooting Blackout in Nigeria, it started from getting our permission, because I, we use this military baju, we use military uh, uniform. Right, so, you have to get permission. getting the permission to shoot with military uniform was the first challenge, which I don't even see that as a challenge. But... 
talking about Nigeria, our country that we, we hope that we have a better Nigeria, mm -hmm. moving from one location to another, I think we, we shot one scene at uh, Ginti. Yes, sir. Ginti was after Ikorodu. It's after Ikorodu right now. Oh, okay. So, a lot of our car broke down on the road. That is tell you we don't have a good road, which our government, please do something about that for us because mm -hmm. that breaks my heart. Bringing a foreigner back to my country, I'm like, oh, why my country? Why is your country like this? And you know, bring the white people into this country and the light goes so off blunt. like boom. And they're like, what's going on? What's, what's going, going on? on? Are you guys cost? Something like that. So, and our government, you're going outside the country, please do something for us about that. Mm -hmm. That was another challenge. Another challenge is when I was shooting, mm -hmm. the drama part was quite okay. My artists, when you give them dialogue, like, blah, 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 they kill the scene. Blah, 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 they murder the scene. But please, oh, they do the scene well for the. They did, oh, sorry to use the kill the scene. They, 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 they nailed it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, finishing right. the scene. Yeah. When it got to me shooting an action part, mm -hmm. the action part, my artist cannot move. When I asked him to move to this point, like, ah, eh, my leg just dislocated. I said, what have you done that your leg dislocated? <laughs> so because of that, I have about seven fights in Blackout, the movie. Right. So I had to, like, achieve one. Oh, big kudos to this guy. His name is Mr. Nolly. Man, respect for you. The guy is my stunt choreographer. Okay. I, I'm sorry? He's my stunt coordinator. Okay. I choreographed the fight. I am the stunt master for Blackout. I directed everything. Oh, well, there was a fight. You guys should go. A lot. Like Man, you, go, you have never seen anything like that in Nollywood movie industry. I'm beating, I'm, I'm hitting my chest saying that okay. to you guys. So while I was shooting all these things, I was able to achieve two or three fights. Because of the fighters, they are not used to my kind of style. International style. Because I, I have the experience. I have worked with a lot of Bollywood, uh, Bollywood movies, mm -hmm. Chinese movie, local Malaysia film. I have done a lot of things with them, and I, 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 I have the practical experience. Mm -hmm. So, but most of them, they are used to only, only just choreograph the fight and go here and there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's far, far different from there. Yeah. So after I cannot achieve this, and I'm like, okay, I think Abe, just leave some fight. So I left some, some yeah. and I just finished whatever I can achieve here. Mm -hmm. So the climax fight, I took it over there. Oh, right. Well shot, well choreographed. Man, you guys can't wait to see this. <laughs> Ooh, the anticipation keeps growing. 29. 29. Of this month, October. Oh, but you open for Avato. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Very funny. Okay, yeah. so now talking about um, going back there, you know, you said we should not even compare the money, the expense of there and there. Um, what people want to say is, how have you how are you able to fund this because uh, even paying the actors is yeah. not a joke yeah. talk less of um production cost of production and and, exactly. and everything else you know so what's what's that okay the point the point is you know producing a uh, a huge um, budget kind of movie like this it's not easy like that mm -hmm. but then don't forget i'm a professional actor professional wrestler I get paid for most of the works I do over there. Right, right, right. I have done a couple of movies over there, at least with my calculation, I have done close to 50 movies. So you're, not a, you're not a lazy youth, but... You can see this, right? <laughs> All right. So you I have done a couple like, of movies. This is and not blackout. You are still doing your protest. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I say a very big thank you to uh, Kate Titanium. Kate Titanium is one of my companies over there. Okay. So they support me back to back. They are my finances and all that. Mm -hmm. And all that. Okay, so we still have to talk to you one more segment. But before we let that, before that happens, we need to go and see a video when we come back. This okay. Day, continue. So we'll be right back with Abby Abiodu. Enjoy. These people are dangerous people. You are about to shake their table and they won't like it. It won't fly. A million Nigerians are living like this without electricity. We say no more darkness. Nigeria is giving people light, yet we do not have light. Not to blackout. They should supply us power. 
Nigeria has been blessed with huge reserves of natural resources. Who sent you to be my mother? Do you want me to tell you? I told you, if you don't marry me, you will never marry anyone. When two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. In the Mopia Mara, Munio, Munio, Mutia, Who is this thing? Who is this thing? Get out of me! I said, kill him. Okay. Welcome back to Biscuit Daily, and I hope you're enjoying everything I'm bringing to you this morning. Now, Mr. Abe Abiojo. Um, Abimbola. Abimbola. Yeah. Sorry. Abe Abimbola. <laughs> Abe Abimbola. I don't know. Why did you... Okay. All right. So, now that we're back, right? Okay. Talking about stunts, I'm a little curious because, you know, when we have dangerous scenes, yes, you are a fighter and everything, but... Do you just act and go home, or are there days that you go home and you're like you have broken bones and you're sore and you have to go? Maybe do they even have 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 you even been wheeled to the hospital from start or does it really happen for real? Yeah, few or, times. Or it, okay, few times. Right. You know, there's not the the you know Malaysian people they will always tell you, uh, kutan, yeah. That is no pain, no gain, because. Yeah. While going into mixed martial arts, it should be registered in your head that you're going to have some bruise. Bruce is a lot of, your, a lot of things like that. And when you're going into filmmaking stunt, mm -hmm. get ready for your bones to be broken. If you are extra careful, you might not, but you can escape some. Mm -hmm. You know, I could remember while I was shooting in Nigeria, blackout, I'm just talking about blackout. Mm -hmm. You know, while I was working with, while I was working with one, of my, one of my stunt men like that, because of the lack of experience, I'm not trying to discredit you. Mm -hmm. It took me up. It was supposed to be racing me up, and it took me up all the way, and it just dropped me like that. Oh my god! I'm sure maybe you guys will see that at the because I put everything on my blue pass. Blue pass is the the, the making in the movie. Right. So it took me up, and it dropped him down. So I this loader got should have got dislocated. Here. Here in Nigeria, and I couldn't fix it. I went back to Malaysia like this. I couldn't fix because even I went to the hospital like, eh, it's just a normal. I was trying to explain. Like, it was on filmmaking. I said, eh, it's just put this put that. It doesn't work until I went for now, wet cup therapy. Because, now, yeah, until I got back there, so I fixed that. And aside from that, Wait, we have, they really just hit they, and we, they, the same pain you felt while you were dislocated. The same pain to jab you back. To jab, thank you very oh much. Oh my god! So you, it is what it is. You have to go through all this yeah. because you want it, then you have to go for it. So mm -hmm. even that, that that was one. When we were concluding the movie, the fight over there, my right. very good body, which is his name is uh, Dato Subash. He was flying all the way because I was supposed to, to be kicking him. So while I kicked him, mm -hmm. we, we used to use rigging. We used rigging, which is a big secret for Nollywood movie industry. You will see that at the back, at the end of uh, Blackout the movie. So while I kicked him from what, up, what's rigging the flying? The cable, the flying cable. I know. Okay, okay. I yeah, know. we use a lot of that in Blackout. I, want, the movie. I told you, like I I know stuff, but I don't know there because it's not really my thing. But yeah. I would, I have an idea. You have, see, as a presenter, you have to have an idea. Of everything. You should, you should. Even if you don't have every, you everything, you. Get you need you yeah. need someone so because i always felt like you know as a child in nigeria when you How watch people fly, fly? <laughs> i know that's where you go <laughs> you go no hey, no i you see oh. someone, when we even posted the trailer of blackout the movie a lot of like ah, what kind of big trick is this uh, but they love it that's yeah. that's my that's my you know that's my thing like i, I think that's why some people don't movie. some people prefer jackie chan to jet lee to jet lee because, because jet lee it just never says like, real come on yeah you know, why jackie chan they'll beat him to stupor you know that kind because of thing. Because it, it yeah. makes it real. And it, it makes it, it real. I, I but yet, they still use rigging. Yes, they use flying cable. Because when you fly, how do you fly? 
So this from is, here you are uh, to the next three buildings. Waiting so this is what Nigerians are not doing. Mm-hmm. I I don't want to say they are lazy, but the thing is, we feel too comfortable in our comfort zone. Same storyline. Same storyline. Story no, Nigerians, we have a very good storyline. If you see some movies, now, very good storyline. Right. The location, night, like, the mm. car, the costumes, no, I everything. Mean, like way back then. Way back then, you yeah. Know, before the Netflix before, of a thing. And then we also had like the same actors. Repeating you know, the same faces, the, repeat it, and then the same storylines. They only change the title. Yeah, but the only change the same title. thing. They, they like, might put one on. in the front or put it at the back. So that's why I'm like, okay, I think we need to do something different. Mm-hmm. And trust me, this is totally different. Awesome. It's totally okay, different. so how do you balance life and work? Because you know you sound super busy. So, you know, yeah, and then also that's question one. Also question two: How do you stay focused? Because there's a lot of distraction. Yeah, you know, success has many friends and also has many distractions, like you say. And you know, if you're not careful, the distractions could actually just end the person, end and the career, person, yeah. end everything. And what the person will remember for is not even for the good they did, but for the vices they, 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 they partook they in. So, um, so how do you? I especially for someone like you, you're you're very open and friendly very, 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 very and chatty, me. and then you're like hip and with the. Oh, papa Thank hair you. on you. <laughs> you, you know, I'm just teasing. Like the fly hair, you know, you know, you the, have the first women question, and yeah. all those kind of things. You the know? first question mm-hmm. was, um, I'm trying to put everything together. The first yeah. question was, uh, how do I balance my life with yeah. the family? Yeah. Well, no matter how big you are or how busy you are, you should be family oriented because when everything is said, it's all said and done. Mm-hmm. It's your family that will get your back because uh, people can tell you. Hey, we love you today. Tomorrow they might not love you no more. But yeah. if you have a very good family, then trust me, you have it all. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I think I am family oriented, and I, I believe in family so much. Family comes first. Right. Wherever I go, right. even if I, because yes, I, I I always get busy. But then, even if I if I had a day to spend with my family, mm-hmm. I let them feel the love. Yeah, I let you, them. You're f- there. Yeah. You're not on your phone. You're not on on the thank, computer. Thank you very you're much. There. So if I knew, yeah. actually, I'm. Not. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah, I, know, I know. I know that's where you're going. <laughs> so I'm always please, on my phone, but I'm with my family. I'm just telling you. I know. That's what I'm saying. Please be there. That's what I'm saying. You know, thank you for being in Nigeria. Yeah, and all I'm being that honest, anyways. But at least I spend the time with them if we yeah. have to go out something like that. Because it's not easy to just drop your phone when you're it's working. Even easy. when I'm home, even for me, I'm always because you know I have things and work. Phone, you know, our so phones are our workshop phones these are days. Workshop. This, so that's, so, that's that's it. We can we can be hypocrite about that. But don't let it be your focal. Thank you very much. Point all the time. Family yeah. time. I understand some people get busy, but then your time with your family mm-hmm. should be quality time. Okay. So on about the distraction. Yeah. On the public side, mm-hmm. I always tell my my boys and I always tell my people about this like. If you want to be somebody in life, you don't have to pay attention to to distractions because number one thing is you are your own rescue. Mm-hmm. Because if you cannot rescue yourself, nobody's coming to rescue. I've got my own problem. She's got her own problem. So we're not.